Hey everyone, thanks so much for checking out Sortly. Today I'm gonna to walk you through how to create QR codes or barcodes for any of your items within Sortly. Now, in this case, depending on which plan you're on, you may have access to only QR codes, and if you're on Ultra or Enterprise, you would have access to QR codes and barcodes within the software. We're gonna cover how to create both within the setup currently, and I'm gonna walk you through how to do that now. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is either find your uh, set of items or work on a specific item. In this case, I'm gonna work with a singular item within Sortly. To begin here, I'm gonna click on the three dots and I'm gonna click on the create label option. Now there's a couple different ways inside of Sortly that you can create labels. Um, specifically through the settings panel, there's a way to create labels and I'll show you that in just a moment. Now this option that I'm walking through is gonna be specifically if you already have an item created or items selected within Sortly, you can create labels for that item specifically. Now in this case, you're gonna start by selecting the label type. We have two different options available to us on our current plan. One is for the QR label and then one is for the barcode label option. I'm gonna work with QR codes in this case, but I'm gonna actually show you a preview of both QR codes and barcodes so you can ultimately determine which method you wanna go with on your end. The next step here is to select the paper size that you wish to work with. It, by default, it's gonna set it to a US letterhead. However, you have an option for A4 sheet for our international customers. And then there's also an option for a label printer option. Now we work with a bunch of different label printers on our end, specifically Dymo, Zebra, Brother as examples. However, the label printer option will only currently offer one size label for you. So do keep that in mind and I'll show you that sizing now. Currently, it's a four inch by two and a quarter inch label. So on that side of things, uh, if that's gonna work for what you need, label printer would be a great option. Uh, if you do go with a standard US letterhead or an A4 sheet, you're also gonna have the ability to have seven different sizes of labels, specifically with working with QR codes. Now the barcode labels are a little bit different. Um, they're gonna have two different sizes when you're working with a standard printer. You have a smaller size and kind of a medium size here. Now a lot of the information on these labels, you're not able to customize QR codes. If you're looking for more customization, QR codes will have the ability to have more customization to them. Um, so that's why I typically recommend that method here. Uh, however, it is completely optional and up to you as to what method you wanna go with. Now from a sizing perspective, we offer all the way from one inch by one inch, all the way up to an extra large label, which is five and a half by eight and a half. I'm gonna use a much larger label here on my side of things, specifically because I wanna walk you through the different settings that we have available to you uh, in terms of customization. Now the first field down here, you're gonna see include additional item details. If we toggle this on, this is gonna enable it so that we can see or add any of the additional fields that we've created, whether that's a default field or a custom field, and we can add that information directly into this label. For example, if I wanted to pull in any of this data, let's say for example, an expiration date, I could have that expiration date display on the label and you would see it right here. As we scroll down a little bit further, if the uh, label has, or sorry, if the item has a photo, you can toggle this on, you would be able to include that item's photo here. If you wanted to upload your own logo, you can absolutely do that. There's no sortly branding on these labels anyway, but if you wanted to have more of a personalized experience, you could easily do so by uploading your own logo and that would display up here. And then finally, there is an option to add an additional note. So if you had any specific notes or details that you wanted to add on the specific label, you could type in the custom note field and that would pull that data into the system here. Now, once you everything looks good here, it's gonna ask you to go to the second step. Now this step is gonna be for generating the PDF. Ultimately, shortly we'll generate the PDF for you. With that PDF, you'll then print that out to either your label printer or the standard printer that you're working with on your side of things. The first set of options here is gonna be for label quantity. So in this case, uh, it's always gonna to default to custom and it's gonna set the quantity to one. If we click on this drop down here, there's also one per item. So if we had multiple items selected, it would generate multiple labels here or it's as per items quantity. So if there is 25 quantity remaining for the specific item, it would gener generate 25 different labels. In this case, I'm just gonna select custom. I'm gonna select it to one. You can then choose the label start position. If you toggle this on, this is really beneficial. Let's say you've used part of your label paper already. Uh, let's say in this example, the first slot has already been used, but the second slot is available. This makes it so you're not wasting any uh, ink on your side of things um, in fields that have already been, where the stickers have already been pulled. Um, so this is definitely beneficial to you. So feel free to utilize this if needed. You can also toggle on include printing instructions. So if you need those printing instructions to be included, simply toggle that on. And then lastly, there is an option to send a copy to your email. So if this is toggled on, it's gonna send you a copy to your email as well as uh, it's gonna download that PDF for you on your side of things. 
Down below here, you're gonna see some label information. So currently based on the size that we've selected, we're getting two labels per sheet. This is the recommended uh, compatible Avery paper um, that we work with. And you can also click on this link to purchase labels. It's gonna take you over to Amazon based on the size that you're going with. So you can reorder directly from there. You can also get labels from your local convenience stores, such as like a Walmart, um, Costco, Staples, things like that. We'll typically have these labels on hand. The printer type, this lets you know what type of printer you're working with. Again, we're using a standard printer with the laser or inkjet function. And then we also have a link for some recommended printers if you would like those as well. Once everything looks good here, we're gonna click on the create label button. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna generate a PDF for us on our side of things that we can then open up and print out. Now I'm gonna open that in just a second, but I did wanna highlight uh, on the item that we're working with, in this case, the MacBook Pro, if we click into this item, we're now gonna see that there is a specific QR code that was generated. So this code was built out for us within the system, and this was created via Sortly. Now this branding, again, is not gonna be on there. Uh, however, this just lets us know that the QR code that we just created is now linked or connected to that item specifically. So if we were to scan this code in the future, uh, it's gonna pull this item up every single time and we're able to pull this information into the system. Now on this side of things, if I go back to the PDF screen here, and let me rotate this label a couple times, this is an example of what the label would look like. So if you had a uh, company logo up here, it would display, here's the name of the item. If it had an expiration date, you'd see this information here. Here's the photo of that item. And then here is also the QR code. So if we scan this code, again, it's gonna take us directly into this item uh, every single time. So I hope this helps with the explanation of how to create or link a QR code or barcode to an item in Sortly. As always, if you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out to our support team, support at sortly.com. We're happy to help with anything that you may come up with. Thanks.